We are back and it's been a long time, almost five months in fact, since the last MXGP races. Since the title of Hurlings in MX2 and Geyser in MXGP, many things have changed. First of all, some big MX2 names have moved up to MXGP. Now, I mentioned Jeffrey Hurlings earlier. Will he be able to claim his first MXGP title in his rookie year, like Fevra and Geyser? Other names to look out for are Paul's Jonas, who finds himself as the main protagonist in the Red Bull KTM MX2 team alongside his rookie MX2 teammate, Jorge Prado. But if last year's anything to go by, I'm sure Siwa and Pacharel will give them both a run for their money. This year, the new season will be gripping. We have 19 rounds worldwide, plus the Monster Energy Motocross of Nations in Matterley Basin, UK, on the 1st of October. Welcome to La Salle for the very first MXGP race of the season the MXGP of Qatar. Tim Geiser and Tony Cairoli take us for a spin around the LaSalle circuit here using the new GoPro Hero 5s with telemetry and GPS. Through the first turn, over the Fox hole shot and into turn two. The turn eventually opens out into a series of waves, eight in total, and you continue to go through the right-hander, gathering speed, eventually landing on the downside of the eighth one into turn three. Of course, there is a series of lines through there. A lot of rocks have been taken out this year, a lot more dirt put on top as well. So a lot more scope for the riders to negotiate around this circuit. Through turn four, over the single, and then the first of the Monster Energy jumps. It's the double step down, landing hard on the brakes into turn five. Exit the turn, over the Ippon jump, and into this left-hander. Gets very rutty through here during the course of the weekend. Dropping down into the next right-hander. We've seen one or two spills over the years through there. Then on the gas over the second of the Monster Energy tabletops. Again, landing hard on the brakes into this 180 right. Over a small single. And then through this left. See how the telemetry has slowed down on the uh, right-hand side. And the revs will start to pick up here on the left-hand side of the screen as they clear the double on the infield section of the racetrack. Through the next right, over a small tabletop, landing into this 180 right with just a couple of corners from the finish line here. Over the single, through this left, over Scrub Hill, and then over the Tag Heuer jump. It used to be a quad, but it's now a triple. And that brings the riders to the final corner in terms of the finish line. There is the Monster Energy finish line jump. landing and then hitting this next jump it's a double during the race into the right hander off to the left the riders can access pit lane but if they continue then watch the speed on the right hand side reaching one of the highest points on the track past pit lane 
braking hard into the 180 right. Exit here, the riders then hit the single, they're back onto the start straight to start another lap here at Masail. The MX2 class for 2017 is possibly the most open it's been in a long time, so let's give you a heads up as to who to look out for this season. With Jeffrey Hurlings and Max Anstey moving into MXGP, all eyes will undoubtedly be on the rider who finished runner-up in 2016, Jeremy Siwa. The Suzuki World MX2 rider impressed last year and found the podium 10 times, and will no doubt be looking for that first GP win as well as the world title. But it won't be easy, and here's why. Benoit Pacherel has claimed four career podiums. Three of those came last year on his way to third overall, and make no doubt about it, the Khmer official Yamaha rider will be a serious challenger for the MX2 crown. Despite missing the last five rounds through injury, Pauls Jonas will be aiming to add the MX2 title to his already impressive CV. So far, the Red Bull KTM factory racing pilot has claimed the 85 and 125 European titles, the 125 Junior World Championship, and was MX2 runner-up in 2015 and the Latvian has to start as one of the favourites. He's also just one of three riders to have won an MX2 race coming into this season. 2016 was a breakout year for HSF Logistics Motorsports' Brian Vogers of the Netherlands, and with two visits to the podium, he'll no doubt be looking for the top step as he aims to improve on six overall last year. He'll be partnered with Calvin Belandrin and Davy Pucci's in what is a very strong team indeed. It's been a tough few seasons for the Italian Samuele Bernardini, but in what was something of a comeback year for the TM Factory rider, the 3-2-1 certainly left his mark last year. He narrowly missed out on the podium on three occasions, and his eighth overall in the final standing should see him as a force to be reckoned with in 2017. Bulgaria's Petar Petrov is another rider who's had a tough couple of seasons, but two podiums in two years means the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider should not be counted out. He has a new teammate this year in the form of Adam Sterry, and the Brit is pretty rapid at the drop of a gate, so don't be surprised to see both riders running up front. As we head into 2017, just one rider on this year's grid has won an MX2 Grand Prix, and that's the American Thomas Covington. After switching to the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna factory racing team in 2016, TC64 really upped his game. With two race wins under his belt as well, Covington knows how to get the job done and will be looking to get off to a flyer here in Qatar. So what about the rookies? After winning the EMX 250 title last year, Thomas Kier Olsen will be a very dark horse and a possible top fiver right off the bat, especially if his impressive debut in Switzerland last year is anything to go by. He remains Husqvarna mounted, but gets the upgrade to the official Rockstar Energy Factory team, alongside Covington and Conrad Muse. Second overall in last year's EMX 250 championship was the American Darren Sinai, and like Olsen, has already had a taste of MX2. This year, he will race for Monster Energy DRT Kawasaki and will be based in England. Last year, he took two overall victories, so knows how to win races. Can he do the same in MX2? Another rider to look out for will be Suzuki World MX2 pilot Bas Farsen, who moves up to MX2 after placing third in EMX250 last year. With Jeremy Sewer as his teammate and Stefan Eberts as his boss, expect his learning curve to be pretty steep. Finally, one rider to definitely look out for is Red Bull KTM Factory Racing's Jorge Prado, who almost pulled off a shock race win over Jeffrey Hurlings at Assen on his MX2 debut last year. The kid is rapid out of the start, and if his rivals give him half a sniff at leading a race, he will be tough to beat. First gate drop of the season, MX2 race one, and charging down through the first corner, the two Red Bull KTMs are Jorge Prado and Pauls Jonas, but it was Jonas who grabbed the Fox hole shot. Samuele Bernardini was well placed inside the top five on that TM, and so too was Giulio Nieber making a return from injury after being out for more than a year. The 33 from Belgium went around the outside of Prado to get himself into second, and then set about the race leader, Pauls Jonas. Bernardini was having a great ride, but Thomas Covington found his way through into six with that pass on the Italian. But Lieber was in a class of his own. Jeremy Sewer, one of the title favourites, fell. 
from a top 10 place who remount in 25th as Thomas Kier Olsen, the 250cc European champion from last year, started to make his mark in MX2 as well as he climbed towards the top five. Lieber then went down after catching the race leader, Paul Jonas. He lost two positions to Thomas Kier Olsen and Benoit Pacherel, but would eventually start to find his way back towards the front. Pacherel then found himself in a battle with Lieber. He passed the Belgian, got himself into second, and then went after Jonas. The Khmer Yamaha Yamalube rider eventually made that pass stick on Pierre Olsen to get himself into second. And then all eyes were on the battle between Jonas and Pacherel as the race drew to a close. Thomas Kier Olsen lost out to Julian Lieber, found himself in fourth, that's where he would finish. But Benoit Pacherel had several attempts at taking the lead, but was just too careless in the final moments, eventually handing the advantage back to Jonas. Thomas Kier Olsen, though, a great performance in the first MX2 race, but it was a win for Jonas. Pacherel was second, Lieber third, Kier Olsen, Bernardini, your top five. MX2 race two, and this time it was Thomas Covington, the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna rider that grabbed the Fox hole shot ahead of Paul Jonas as everybody else charged through the first few corners. Bernardini again inside the top 10, just behind the 61 of Prado and the 96 of Hunter Lawrence for Suzuki World MX2. Bernardini though, banged bars with Michele Chervelin, was thrown out the front door, he picked himself up, but would only finish 23rd. Jonas, once again, led though, just like he did in race one with Thomas Kier Olsen and Benoit Pacherel giving chase. Pacherel found his way into second by lap two. With a pass on Thomas Kier Olsen on the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna, and then the Khmer Yamaha rider went after the Red Bull KTM of Jonas, just like it was in race one. And joining the party was Julian Lieber, number 33 on the very private KTM. Got himself into third with that pass on the European champion from last year in the 250 class, and then set about Benoit Pacherel. Those two eventually started to catch the race leader, Paul Jonas, as the two Husqvarna's of Covington. And Kier Olsen battled over fourth place. Covington, though, would disappear later on in the race with a technical issue. Jonas was riding a steady race mindful of what was going on behind him. Pacherel was forced into making one or two errors, just like he did in the first race. He lost valuable ground on the final lap, handing Jonas another race win. It was two out of two for Jonas. Pacherel came home second, Lieber third, and Thomas Kier Olsen fourth, just like it was in race one, with Siwa and Lawrence fifth and sixth. Jonas, your overall winner though from Pacherel and Lieber, here in Qatar. And for Paul's Jonas, a first ever MX2 Grand Prix victory. For Red Bull KTM, and of course, he continues the tradition. Left by Jeffrey Hurlings, who was a four-time winner here in Qatar. Next stop, Indonesia. Can he defend that red plate? For the first race of the year, 
Some of the riders from MXGP and MX2 enjoyed some time off, and some of them went to see the Al Shakab Equestrian Center, the home of some of the world's finest horses. And as it's the opening round, the traditional press conference and the riders photo shoot also took place before the first gate drop of the season. been a productive winter with various riders switching bikes or teams or both. Here's a quick guide as to the movers and shakers in MXGP, starting with the defending champions Tim Geiser and HRC. Double world champion Tim Geiser will hope to make it three in a row this year in back-to-back -back titles in MXGP. He remains at Honda, but the Garibaldi team he raced for last year becomes the official Team HRC for 2017. Alongside Geiser is the Russian Evgeny Bobashev, who enters his seventh season with the mighty Japanese Giants. After a two-year hiatus, the Volvo Yamaha MXGP rider Arno Tonus makes his debut in the MXGP class and will be looking to impress on his return. Alongside him is Sean Simpson, who finds himself back in blue in what has been a team and machine change for the three-time Grand Prix winner. The last time he raced a Yamaha, he claimed his maiden Grand Prix victory in 2013, and armed with factory machinery, expect Simpson and Tonus to be a threat from the very first round. Perhaps one of the biggest changes is Gautier Paulin's move to Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Racing. Third in 2012 and runner-up in 2015, last year was over before it began after a back injury left him on the sidelines. It'll be interesting to see how he gels with the Husky. Max Nagel enters his third season with Husqvarna and after finishing third last year, the German will be looking to win that elusive title and it'll be interesting to see the dynamic between him and Paulin as the season unfolds. Valentin Guio swaps blue for red as he joins Team Honda Red Moto. He's also parted ways with his trainer Yves de Marier and the three-time MX2 Grand Prix winner hopes his fresh outlook will come with its rewards. Moving to MXGP are three-time MX2 world champion Jeffrey Hurlings and former third place finisher Max Anstey. Hurlings has already shown us a glimpse of what we can expect at last year's Motocross of Nations and will be itching to get off to a flyer here in Qatar, a place he has never lost. As for Max Anstey, he remains with Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Racing but moves next door to join Nagel and Paul Ann and many people think he might just suit the bigger bike, but will he be a title threat? We can never rule out former champion Roman Fevre, who will be looking to bounce back from last year's injury hit campaign. The Monster Energy Yamaha rider found it difficult to defend the ground and will be keen to regain the title. Antonio Cairoli has gone two years without a title now. Injury and young guns have kept him from adding to his eight championships, but ignore him at your peril. The Red Bull KTM rider took three victories last year and the neutrals amongst us would love to see him win again. Only time will tell. Jeremy Van Horbeek seems rejuvenated in 2017 and could be a dark horse and a serious contender for the crown. If he can deal with the pressure he puts on himself, expect him to be in the hunt. Last year's move to Monster Energy Kawasaki didn't go according to plan for Commander Sal in what was an injury hit campaign, but the MX Panda still managed to claim a Grand Prix victory before the season was over, and he has to be taken seriously, as always. Finally, Kevin Strybos surprised us all last year by winning his first Grand Prix in nine years. If he stays healthy, he still has the potential to make the top three, certainly the top five. Either way, we wish Kevin and everyone else in MXGP the very best of luck in 2017. Defending MXGP world champion Tim Geiser got off to the perfect start in the qualifying race by winning on Friday night. But it was Tony Cairoli who grabbed the Fox hole shot in MXGP race one as Max Anstey took a turn right a little bit too soon. The two HRC boys provided the fireworks in the early stages as Bobrashev and Geiser clashed, pushing his teammate Geiser back into fourth place as DeSalle went through. Cairoli, though, 
led from the front. With Bobrashev in second and DeSalle in third, Tim Geiser, who was feeling a bit under the weather with a fever, was doing his best to keep in touch with the top three. Jeremy Van Horbeek gave chase for Monster Energy Yamaha in fifth position as the Monster Energy Kawasaki of DeSalle kept trying to find a way past Team HRC's Evgeny Bobrashev. The Red Bull KTM of Tony Cairoli, though, got his head down and was showing us why he is an eight-time world champion and how determined he is to push on for that ninth title. The two Husfanas of Paul Ant and Nagel were in sixth and seventh during the mid part of the race and the MXGP rookie with a hand injury, Jeffrey Hurlings, was just feeling the pain of that broken hand. He eventually came home in 18th place as Arnold Tonus for Wilvo Yamaha MXGP found his way past Nagel to get himself into seventh. That's where the Swiss rider would stay. Bobrashev, though, lost out to Clement de Salle. The Belgian taking second, five laps from home. And in the closing stages, Tim Geiser made this impressive move on his teammate Bobrashev to get himself into third with four laps to go. But couldn't do anything about Clement de Salle or Tony Cairoli. And it was Cairoli, though, who was mercurial in moto number one. He led every single one of the 18 laps. And the Red Bull KTM factory rider was in pole position after the first race. No doubt feeling very confident going into race two. De Salle was second. The Hondas of Geiser and Bobrashev were next up in third and fourth. MXGP race two, and this time it was Roman Fevre who took advantage of a mistake from Caroli as he headed to the line to grab the Fox hole shot. The Monster Energy Yamaha rider though, his lead didn't last long as around the outside went Team HRC's Tim Geiser. Cairoli was there in third with Paul Ant in fourth for Rockstar Energy Husfana and DeSalle right there again for Monster Energy Kawasaki. A tricky, gnarly circuit lay in wait for the riders in the second MXGP race. And despite feeling under the weather, Geiser was doing a great job of keeping Kai Rowley there, 222 at bay in second on that 450 KTM. Roman Fevre for Monster Energy Yamaha, 461, settled down in third place just ahead of Commander Sal and Gautier Paulin as Bobrashev and Koldanov battled over seventh. Fevre doing his best to make up for a disappointing first race. Was starting to feel the groove as his world championship hopes started to get back into life. De Salvo had other ideas. He harried the Frenchman. Tried to push him into a mistake. He thought he'd make the pass around the outside, but Fevre just closed the door and kept the Belgian at bay. Cairoli, despite losing about three or four seconds to Geiser at one point in the race, turned on the afterburners and went back after the Slovenian, the defending champion. Made a move around the outside. That came to no avail, but in the next turn, he managed to make the pass stick. There was a little bit of a love tap there as they went through the right turn. But with two laps to go, we had a new leader and it was Tony Cairoli, and he went on to win race two. Unbelievably, it was Cairoli's first ever Grand Prix win in Qatar. Geiser came home second, and DeSalle was on the podium for Monster Energy Kawasaki. Bobrashev and Fevre rounding out the top five. But for Tony Cairoli, he leads the championship for the first time in two years. Could this be his year? Of course, there is a long, long way to go. Next up is Indonesia, round two.
The 2017 season has well and truly begun with a brand new MX2 winner right here in Qatar. Paul Jonas claims his very first GP overall victory. In MXGP, the more experienced riders that we supported over the years have definitely made a comeback. Tony Cairoli, the eight times world champion, is fitter than ever, taking back that red plate for the first time in two years. We now head to Pankow Penang for round two of the 2017 MXGP season for the MXGP of Indonesia. Yeah. 